Hello and welcome to the Grand Line Review, your source for everything One Piece. And today we are going to be exploring the unexplored to the best of our abilities by placing our focus once more on islands. In particular, we want very mysterious islands that we have yet to see and simply must by the end of the series. And at this stage, you might be asking yourselves, how can there be 10 majorly unexplored islands remaining when we are this close to the end of One Piece? Well, you'd probably be surprised because there are actually far, far more than that. I had to narrow this list down to 10. That's how many crazy question mark islands remain in One Piece. However, in order to explore them in this video, you're going to need your trusty Grand Line Passport. And if you don't have one, well, you can just click this handy red button right here. It looks like it says subscribe, but it's actually pronounced as Passport Application Button, which does also come with the side effect of granting you regular One Piece content uploaded straight into your YouTube feed and make you an ever-growing member of our Grand Fleet. So not only is it a win-win, it's actually a win-win-win. Hmm. But with that necessary admin out of the way, let's set sail to number 10, Raijin Island. We are commencing our journey here today in the New World and having emerged from the depths of Fishlandia, we find ourselves with a choice of three islands, one of which is Raijin Island, an existence best known in the series for one thing and one thing alone, which is that it is being perpetually struck by lightning. And while I suppose that doesn't make it the most desirable of locations to visit, much less live on, we do know of at least one citizen of Raijin Island and her name is Kasa, an elderly woman possessing a smile creepier than that of Mad Monk Arush himself. And actually, Arush is very relevant here because he is one of our only known visitors to this location, which occurred pre-time skip. Although in more recent days, Smoker was seen camping Raijin Island, betting that Luffy would deem this location to be the most dangerous of the three New World Starter Islands and thus choose to visit it. And I think it's a shame that we never did because I am ever so keen to discover the mysteries behind this absolutely wild location, as well as how people managed to, you know, stay alive there, which apparently has something to do with umbrellas. Oh, and Raijin Island was also referenced on with area when Nami was briefly reading about it, so it's clearly not a throwaway location. Whatever this place is, Oda likes it. Oda likes it a lot and I hope that we get to visit it someday. But now we have number nine, which will be Karakuri Island. And to get here, we now have to hop over or under the red line back into paradise to find our mechanical winter wonderland, which is probably best known as being the location where Frankie spent two years during the time skip. So we have currently explored this place much more so than say Raijin Island. However, it is absolutely impossible to be satisfied with the small bits that we've seen, considering that this is the birthplace of King Enigma himself, Dr. Vegapunk. But fascinatingly enough, Karakuri Island has relevance beyond that of Vegapunk punk because it is an integral element in Enel's cover story where he travels to the moon. And the little cyborg dude things he meets on the moon, you know, Spacey, Cosmo and Galaxy, well, they actually originate from Karakuri Island. Although they were not made by Vegapunk, these mechanical marvels were actually created by the now Pasukimi. So there is a lot more to this island than you may remember. And I would love to explore everything else it has to offer, which would undoubtedly consist of fun science shenaniganry. But for something far less fun, we now head off to number eight, Baltigo. Probably the least aesthetically appealing island we'll be going over today, but extraordinarily important as for the large majority of the series, it served as the primary headquarters of the Revolutionary Army. And that fact alone has made the rather bare rocky landscape of Baltico quite an iconic image. In fact, it even has its own island-ish epithet in the series known as the Island of White Soil, which very much reminds me of some kind of salt plane. But a fun thing about Baltico is that this must be undoubtedly one of the most difficult islands in the world to find, given that Dragon and the Revolutionary Army were able to remain so successfully hidden for so long. Like we're talking decades here without going detected by the Marines or even the Emperors of the Sea. Although in regards to that, I can't really tell you vaguely where this is. It's in the Grand Line, we do know that. But whether it's in Paradise or the New World is very much still up in the air. With that said, I would assume it would be in the New World because it makes sense with various logistics and it would be easier to hide in, but that may or may not be irrelevant now because after stowing away, Jesus Burgess went and ruined everything. And for whatever reason, Blackbeard decided to immediately attack the island followed by a slew of Cypherpol agents landing as well after being given the island's location, assumedly due to some sort of treachery somewhere. So Baltigo, unfortunately, is one of those places that we may simply never see more of, much like number seven, Lodestar Island. Now you may or may not be aware of the name of this place, but it is monumentally important. And for the longest time in the series, we conflated Lodestar Island with Laugh Tail, thinking that they were one in the same. However, Lodestar Island is the final island in the new world and the location in which all differing log post paths will eventually land at. And that is very different from Laugh Tail, which we now know is an island that can only be found via the directives of the road poneglyphs. That doesn't make Lodestar Island any less special though, because it is still ridiculously hard to reach. 
In fact, the Roger Pirates were the first group to do so after being untouched for about 800 years. And what's even more notable about Lodestar Island is that this is where travelers become alerted to the existence of the Poneglyphs, the people who made them, as well as the final hidden island of Laugh Tale. And all of this information is conveyed, somehow, but this is basically what made Roger realize that he was nowhere near the end of his journey, and now he had to do it all again in order to find all of the funky hidden content. However, as flagged by Inurashi on Zoe, there is actually no need for the Straw Hats to visit Lodestar Island because they became aware of the Poneglyphs incidentally, so as sad as it is, we may never actually find the technical final island of the Grand Line. But hopefully we do at the very least get to visit number six, being Shanks's home island. And I will admit this one is a bit tricky because unlike everything we've talked about thus far, there's no guarantee that this place actually, you know, exists. It's more or less just assumed that Shanks, as with his emperor counterparts, has a stronghold island of his own. It is a reasonable thought though, because as much as the details of Shanks' forces are very much shrouded, we do know for a fact that he does have his own territory, which was shown in the Straw Hat Grand Fleet cover story. Rather hilariously, I might add, because basically Bartolomeo landed on an island under the protection of Shanks, at which point he proceeded to burn the Jolly Roger of the Red Hair Pirates and forcibly sold the citizens straw hat related merchandise. However, this unnamed island is unlikely to be Shanks's base and a key contender would probably be this mysterious winter island, which has appeared at least twice over a period of time. Once when Ace went to visit Shanks in order to thank him for saving Luffy. And then again, during the Jaya arc, we would see the red hair pirates in a very similar winter setting. Although it could also be the mystery jungle island where Mihawk came to visit Shanks, or they could be the same island experiencing different seasons. Who knows? Not me, and that's why Shanks' home island finds itself on this list here today. But traveling forwards, we have number five, which will be the Sorbet Kingdom. And here we have our first unexplored island outside of the Grand Line, because the Sorbet Kingdom is located firmly in South Blue and is best known for being the one-time home of former living being and current cyborg Bartholomew Kuma. But not only that, Kuma was actually the ruler of the Sorbet Kingdom, which is a story that 100% needs to be told. There's way too many important question marks here because under some sort of undoubtedly tragic circumstances, Kuma would lose his status of king, eventually becoming a warlord of the sea, in addition to a member of the Revolutionary Army, the latter of which he assumedly did much earlier than the former. Sadly though, the only other thing we know about the Sorbet Kingdom is that it does currently have a queen named Connie, who Jewelry Bonnie impersonated in order to infiltrate the reverie. Although because this is Bonnie we're talking about, there is every chance that she is Connie, or I suppose the daughter of Connie, or given her weird powers, even the mother of Connie. Bonnie is weird like that, but I want to see this delicious Sorbet Kingdom regardless. Almost as much as I would like to see number four, which will be Hachinosu. And this island's naming and translation is complicated and we'll get into it as we always do, but you may recognize Hachinosu as being Blackbeard's current base where he conducts his dastardly pirate business. In terms of key geographical features, it is characterized by a rather subtle looking skull rock. And if you look carefully, you can see it right about here. Now, as for its name, this island is actually known in the fan base by three different terms. The first of which is Hachinosu, the direct Japanese, and the second of which would be B. Hive Island, which you will most often see in scanlations. This is because the word Hachinosu literally translates into beehive, but sort of not really in this case because it's being used colloquially to refer to a description of riddling someone with bullets. And hence why it has a third name in the official English translation being Fuller Lead Island, as in full of lead, which yes, is a more pragmatically correct translation, but I just call it Hachinosu because it's so much easier. And this island holds great significance for reasons that manga readers will be well aware of, but I won't be spoiling that here today. What I do need to do, however, is put up a spoiler warning for Unexplored Island number three though. This location is not yet known to anime only watchers, so please do skip to this time if you don't want some pretty hefty spoilers. But for everyone else, we will move on to number three, which will be the fabled God Valley. And if I could have my pick of any island to visit right here and now, I think this would be the one. I actually think the God Valley is much more mysterious than Laugh Tale itself, just due to the circumstances with rocks, Garp, the Celestial Dragons, and it's complete and utter disappearance, not only from maps, but also I guess recorded history. Something about this location is so world shaking that it needed to be completely erased, much like the island of Ohara, just on an entirely different level. And unlike some entries on this list, we are definitely not done with this place. Oda brought it up for a reason, and I anxiously await said reason. About as much as I anxiously await number two, Elbaf. Mostly because I just want to see the damn giants already. And yeah, sure, I guess we've already been to Elbaf during Big Mom's flashback, but what we saw 
was just nothing. We got to see the outskirts of a poor Elbafian warrior village, and what I really want to know is what is in or on top of that tree. One of the biggest trees we've ever seen in the series, likely based on Yggdrasil, and almost certainly where the giant nobility, including Prince Loki, dwell. And what's exciting is that when there's a prince, you can also assume that there might be some sort of king as well. But Elbaf is one of those places that is just so thoroughly embedded into the history of One Piece. Every couple of arcs, it has another thread tied to it. Even in unexpected places like any Slobby where we met Oimo and Kashi. Elbaf is an island that Oda has been building up towards for literal decades now, and it needs to be covered in some sort of detail before this series ends. And I have no doubt it will, just like I have no doubt that we will see number one, which is obviously Laugh Tale. I've even said it numerous times throughout this video already, and you know what, I actually considered not including it on this list here today, because it's just so obvious, but at the same time, it's really hard to deny, given that it is the premise of the entire series. Laugh Tale is our ultimate destination, the light in the distance which we continue to chase, holding the answers to almost all of the great mysteries that have kept our minds engulfed in one piece. It's actually at the point where I fear landing on Laugh Tale, because it well and truly signifies a full stop to this experience, and right now, I just want to keep that mystery alive. However, we will eventually hit it, and for the purpose of the greatest unexplored islands in One Piece, Laugh Tale is the obvious number one. But what do you guys think? Please do leave your thoughts in the comments below or even join my Discord server. And if you'd like to see more videos like this, then please do go and check out some of my other content or even subscribe to the channel for more glorious One Piece business uploaded straight into your YouTube feeds. But for now, this has been the Ground Line Review, and I'll see you next time.